Asian group. Uh, Asia Pacific Next Generation organizes webinars uh, on the even months of the calendar year. For example, right. we organize webinars in the on the third Saturday of February, April, June, August, October, and December. Mm -hmm. And our webinars are supposed to uh, educate and introduce new technologies, uh, imaging issues in information communication technologies, and so forth uh, for our participants and our audience. Today, we have uh, Glenn McKnight from Canada speaking to us on the topic of uh, COVID-19 learning challenges and solutions for School of Internet Governance, uh, where they educate people about the internet and internet governance and what internet governance is. So according to the abstract provided by Glenn, the challenges and opportunities facing individuals in the age of COVID-19 has altered everyone's lifestyle and perspective on education. Let me just put on my camera. Today's session, today's webinar, we will explore how we have faced the challenges and opportunities with each of our initiatives. Today's session will provide an overview of these annual events called Schools of Internet Governance, which are a global phenomenon for the past 10 years, evolving into critical short and intensive learning opportunity. Introduction to on the state of schools of internet governance in the age of COVID and journey in the creation of an online multilingual massive open online courseware on internet governance through the virtual school of internet governance. And uh, as you would have seen that Glenn has shared the links to the virtual school of internet governance in the chat. Uh, do click on the link and do check it out. Internet governance, I have attended a few courses on internet governance and uh, I am part of ICANN as well, uh, inter, inter, internet, inter, internet Corporation to Assign Names and Numbers. And that is where I met Glenn for the first time, face to face in one of the uh, conferences, uh, meetings organized. I think uh, uh, that was in, uh, was that in Abu, uh, Abu Dhabi, Glenn? Um, that's a good question. It could be Singapore too. Um, uh, right. Were you were you there as a fellow, uh, Sam? Yeah, no, not in Singapore. The last two that I have attended was uh, uh, Abu Dhabi, and then after that, it was in Morocco. Oh, then it could either place. Uh, I I could have saw right. because Morocco yeah, was so, twice, uh, and Abu yeah. Dhabi was a year. Yeah, could be either one. Yeah. So uh, introducing Glenn, uh, I have known him and he's really active in ICANN and anything to do with internet and internet governance. And uh, Glenn has been active in the business and nonprofit sectors all his life with entrepreneurial ventures with the uh, Bayesian Radio from South Africa and uh, uh, pre OLPC notebook. Yeah, I, I, I remember this, uh, huge project, one laptop per child uh, project uh, that uh, really got uh, uh, things going for countries that were uh, uh, on the other side of the digital divide. And um, he has been a major volunteer over the past 10 years with foundations for building sustainable communities, a Canadian nonprofit organization, and uh, works on uh, active education on ICT, STEM education for young girls and active involvement with humanitarian technology for reliable electricity and low cost internet connectivity. These efforts include the IEEE humanitarian activities and IEEE site. He also has been active with the Internet Society board member 2017 to 2020 and founder and board member of the Internet Society of Canada since 2013. 
And as I've mentioned earlier, Glenn has been active with ICANN since 2009, especially ICANN's at large community. Mm. With that, we hand it over to you, Glenn. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome everyone. Um, so we're gonna share my screen so I can show you my slides, right? Okay, so let me, let me find my um, my slideshow. Uh, let's see. Okay, do we have that? Do you see my slides? Uh, not at the moment. Probably I have to stop my share. Just hold on. Okay. I have already stopped my share, Glenn. Okay. How was yeah, that? it's coming. Yes, we can see it. Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for the uh, introduction and the opportunity to speak to everyone. Um, and and I believe the session is being recorded, so uh, this will be great. Uh, I'm I'm familiar with um, doing these type of sessions because every every Monday I organize a speaker, and I know how difficult it is to get people committed to their time and regardless of the time difference. Uh, but, you know, I appreciate uh, especially the, the organizer's time, uh, which is oftentimes ignored, uh, but the attendees as well that, that have taken the time to come and, and um, feel free, even though we're a small group, uh, I, don't, don't, I don't feel slighted by that. It doesn't mean they're ignoring me. Uh, they have other things uh, that they need to do. So uh, feel free to, uh, Put into the i have the chat open up on my second screen so i should be able to see any any questions but let me dive into this and uh so we can actually talk about what this topic is is COVID 19 and um, learning challenges and solutions for schools of internet governance okay, let me... okay so what's our objective today's objective is surviving COVID-19 with a dose of education. So uh, if you can see the virus there and the needle, uh, if we can think of the um, people who are, don't have COVID, but are, and, and if you look at the numbers of students who have not been able to attend their universities or students in high school and many parts of the world, it's, 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 it's an, a huge impact on their overall plans of education. And so we see a lot of different educational products in the marketplace. And I'll talk about what we did in terms of researching those products. But we felt that that uh, to be able to survive and thrive during this period of COVID, I think education is, and, and what we're doing today is uh, an important element of, of not only learning, but also being able to meet all of you and you meet me and that we are sharing our concepts and our knowledge. And, and it's a friendship way beyond any ethnicity, any gender issues over time and distance. It's a pretty unique period of time. Uh, and I don't think if it wasn't for COVID, we would have this type of uh, opportunity. So let me, let me just do a little timeline. So what we all know, um, you know, what actually actually happened in the last couple of years. Now, this is not the first time we've had, um, uh, you know, any kind of uh, virus uh, of, of any sorts. Going back to the, um, the famous one of, of, the, uh, of um, what they call the Spanish flu, which had nothing to do with Spain. The entire flu was actually created or sprouted in Missouri or Kansas, United States. And it went over to Europe with the soldiers and can, came back from Europe to North America. And, and it was a, one of the very similar phenomenon as we have today, but let's, let's not walk down that history line right now. Let's just focus on this one. So we discover in the fall in, in, of uh, 2019 that there's something going on in Wuhan. Some conspiracy theorists say it was a manufactured uh, virus. Some conspiracy theories it was intentional. Regardless, what we have is we have a situation because of the global economy 
were all tied together. This was predicted. If you go back to what uh, Bill Gates was talking about, the pandemic and his talks at TED, that this was going to happen, whether it happened, started in Wuhan, in the wet markets, or if it started in South Africa or started in New York City, this thing was destined to happen. And we didn't have uh, any, any, you know, really progressive plans. In the Americas, um, you had a, under Obama, President Obama, they actually had a, a COVID, sorry, a, a, a epidemic strategy in order to deal with this, this issue in terms of rolling out uh, cautions. But that was completely abandoned under President Trump. So they, you know, they were completely left uh, flat footed. So when you start to look at the first time the virus hit the United States, from, and I'm talking a very personal perspective, what I was seeing happening, because I was not in Asia at the time, we delivered our NASIG Montreal, that's our face to face school. That's the second one we. We did. We did the San Juan at the ICANN meeting, and we the NASIC, the North American School of Internet Governance, we did in Montreal in November, November 2019, virtually the same time as what was happening in the other side of the world in terms of the announcement that hey, there's there's this flu, and it's pretty it's a SARS type flu. So we um, we merrily did our our session, and we did. Um, it's called an Atmos 3 with the at-large community. And we were, we had a very successful NASIG uh, in Montreal. And then we did the, the ICANN meeting. And, and at the end of it, we said, okay, let's start planning our next NASIG, our next School of Internet Governance, and we'll do it in Washington. And we already organized the people who would be the speakers for that event uh, and organizers. So, okay, so we, we see the spread. The first news that we saw, and it, uh, we saw it hit Seattle, and we saw it hit New York, roughly a, a little bit later in New York. But there were two different viruses because they were coming from different directions. A lot of the air travel, uh, a very significant amount of air travel goes from, from different parts of China to Iran, and from Iran to the New, new World. Um, so we... we in, in Canada, saw a lot of Iranian Canadians uh, living, you know, and, and holidaying in Iran during this period and coming back, and they were one of the points of of access to COVID. So what happens? So I can start to, you know, like many organizations, as we saw uh, with the Indian School of Internet Governance, with this the um, European European. The summer school of internet governance ourselves, the African school, the uh, Southern School of Internet Governance with Olga Cavalli, um, as I said, Satish Babu and Rita and others um, say, what are we going to do? Uh, we can't really, the, can't roll out uh, a school. We can't roll out our events. So first thing we see is the cancellation of the ICANN Cancun in 2020 which was in the March. Then the in your region in Malaysia, in the Kuala Lumpur location in June, and then in The Hague in, in October, all three of those ICANN events were, were canceled. Uh, so, and then the same locations were looking at being the locations for 2021, but because they, they, ICANN put deposits, they, they had money already allocated uh, for for that event that uh, they end up canceling again subsequently. So that's six events that, that in, inherently got canceled. Now, I'll point out that the, uh, the ICANN events uh, for Seattle or anything where, or anywhere in North, like I said, anywhere in North America, the North American school uh, tends to uh, try to take advantage of the speakers, take advantage of the fellows. That, and, and I mentioned before we started that we met uh, myself and Sam at either Abu Dhabi probably, and then we got met each other again in, in Morocco because I've been a volunteer with the, the fellows for over the years. 
So we um, we didn't do it with with the ICANN event, and and the Seattle one is actually starting next week. Uh, right now we're in the pre ICANN event. So as everyone else, the majority of schools got cancelled, and for good reason. So our event that I said a few minutes ago, we were looking at NASIG Washington as our event, but you know the 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 situation became untenable. So we canceled the NASIG Washington and subsequently the NSIG Kilkata um, got canceled, but you know, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that became a virtual event and everybody had scramble, right? So um, if we can't meet, meet face-to-face, what tools are out there in order for us to do um, a Zoom meeting instead? You know, it's just as good, right? So, and, and depending on your account, you can have breakout rooms, you can have a lot of stuff. So people started to roll out using Zoom and other products that live stream and a lot of it in, in webinar formats. And I remember doing the first session as a volunteer for the ISOC SIG on rural development. And we were doing that in March of, of 2020. And I did my session, uh, you know what, I can't remember what my session was about. It could have been on anything, uh, especially if it's around power and connectivity. Uh, networking uh, is something I've been involved with, with IEEE and as well as promoting it with ISOL on community networking. It's possibly that, I, I don't recall. But immediately after I finished, the next speaker was a female and she was from the ISOC, uh chapter of New York and it was immediately zoom bombed with some pornography so they shut it down immediately but fairly shortly after all that shenanigans um, we saw a, a pretty good effort to limit that kind of unpleasantness so which was good to see that it was under control but as as we see today people had to register so we know who they are what their emails are and you, you can't do this sort of stuff. If they thought they could get away with it without registering and all and using fake names, I think today we would be seeing something similar. Okay, let me move on. Okay. Just one second. Okay, so what is our new realities and challenges? Well, 100% virtual webinar formats And so when we do that as organizers of schools of internet governance, we have to ask ourselves a bunch of questions. We have to ask, you know, if we're gonna go get sponsors, um, what value is there for the sponsors? How can you set it up so that your sponsors, whatever your virtual event is, which is substituting for your face-to-face school, how are you providing value to that sponsor? Say they normally give you a thousand, two thousand, five thousand. What are they getting for that? Are they getting um, a speaker opportunity? Are they showcased on the website? Um, how are they making connections? So um, that is something one uh, each of the schools had to think about. You also have to think about, you know, looking at do you charge money to do uh, on, on a virtual webinar meetings or do you commit yourself to a free online course? Big decisions. If it's going to be a free online course, you have to have a good solid business plan, sustainability plan, so that you have um, uh, the protocols in place so that people uh, actually can take the course and and feel comfortable that there is a process that they're involved. And also what's important is that the, the, their email addresses, their information isn't sold, isn't marketed. So there's a level of respect on the privacy, which is critical. The other thing is, as you've seen the slide, administrative controls. Um, I've been watching closely what ICANN is doing on their universal acceptance course. And I don't know how they're going to do it because it's not associated with their ICANN Learn. There doesn't seem to be uh, you know, any kind of mechanism for attendance, uh, you know, and, and monitoring uh, dropout rates, an automatic certificate generation, um, you know, any kind of statistical tool 
which can be used in order to do it. But I brought this up to them. It's something that as they do more and more universal acceptance training to encourage a non-English internet, I think they'll probably get it uh, organized. But right now they, they're doing it uh, sort of haphazard and I'm, I'm trying to advise them how to change that. Um, the other thing is if you're going to be doing um, a virtual webinar thing is like what we're doing tonight, you know, doing it entirely as a self-paced course, uh, as we all seen, the dropout rate is massive. If there's no interaction, um, you want to recruit and follow up with speakers and alumni. And if you have great alumni, you know, getting them involved to be a speaker is not a bad idea. Now, I'll give you an example. When we did our first course, uh, we do an assessment. And, and not everybody does the assessment. You guys all know when you do a conference, very, very, very few people say anything constructive. They will say, great, 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 the check marks, right? And they don't really say anything. But we did get from Shah Rahman from, from Bangladesh a very good comment of saying that we should include in our module something on emerging technologies. So we thought about that. And we came up with the solution of coming up with a new module getting rid of the module we had on schools of internet governance, took that content and put it under actors. And we included 5G artificial intelligence uh, and, and other, other uh, components of that entire course. So we worked on that last summer, we had evaluators uh, assess the quality and, and that's the, one of the extra modules we have right now. Moving forward, um, Decision on online tools uh, is a big jump. You know, you, one has to look. Doing just Zoom calls is not not the same thing as as doing an online course. Um, it's 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 interactive. It's good. It's educational stuff. But there is nothing that's providing you with a common thread that ties each class together. There's no as uh, as yeah. yes. Uh, did you forget to turn on your camera or you want to remain hidden? Uh, let me stop. The, the, let's see. I, I, I tried it a number of times. Yeah. What it says, you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. So I tried it earlier on. Um, okay. uh, maybe you, you can start my video. Yeah. yeah. Let's try again after a while. Okay. I'll give it another shot. I don't see myself. So I was, I, was, yeah. I didn't, I thought uh, you thought I, I looked too sleepy. Oh, uh, uh, no, it's, it's, um, Sam, it's still stopped. I still, I can't see. Okay. Mine. Okay. We'll, we'll fix it and get back to you. Thank you. Okay. Try it again. Uh, Khan? Oh, okay. There I am. Yeah. All right. Everybody see yes. me? Yes. Okay. Uh, great. Uh, I'm using, I'm sorry. I should have used your background. Uh, that's that's one of my backgrounds that I have for the um, NASA course that we're it's open. There's no fellowship, so that's coming up on the 18th and 19th. And the theme of that that session is called "Towards an Inclusive, Trusted, and Resilient Internet." So I, I'll send you a flyer on that. So okay, so everybody can see my slides still. Sam, you can yes, see my can. slides. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so as I was saying, um, you know, if if you are looking at at uh, creating an online course, especially if you're a school of internet governance, and it could be a school of anything, uh, on networking, on Linux, on um, on security, uh, anything, uh, I think it's got to be done in a professional manner. And working with the university could could help with that. Working with your foundations locally can help that but you know some kind of certificate or accreditation is critical and especially from the culture you're coming from and and i could tell you from 33 percent of our our students in our program and 39 percent of our students from africa they value a piece of paper and and i don't think of ourselves as a piece of paper but it is something that they can show their employers or they they have a path of, of towards some kind of accreditation. Now, I'm not saying our course is the only one, but, uh, and, and there's, and I think I'll go into detail in a minute on 
on where else you can get it uh, as, as well. So let me carry on here. Okay, so let's talk about what is an effect of online learning experience. Well, I, I keep emphasizing this again and again, um, that it has to be a seamless administration. So the people who are taking the course really doesn't, they don't really realize what's happening in the background. They don't realize uh, how much power there is in the tool that you're, you're using in order to um, register the students uh, to, to present the material, whether it's quizzes or anything else, that there is this, this seamless administration in the background. And, and it should be a bulletproof and reliable online experience. It shouldn't be something that's up today, gone tomorrow. It's, it's basically financially, it's solid. It's got to be, I, I did a course with IEEE about five years ago and the company, and I can't even remember the name of the company. It's such a bad memory. It got the IT Business of the Year Award, believe it or not, for this online training. And um, it'll come to me as uh, probably in about four o'clock in the morning when I wake up. They got the uh, business and I was paying 400 euros or something for this course. And turns out they never back stuff up. They just stopped instantly. And they, you know, really, really poor, poor product as it turned out. So, so regardless, um, what we, we wanted to have is an experience that provided the clear academic track. And that's only done based on best practice, okay? And it, it has to have um, your testing capability uh, with it. Um, and again, the testing can't be too difficult and it should be able to allow them to use the quizzes as a learning tool. Uh, Interaction and discussion is an important part of learning. So what we looked at is we looked at Coursera. We looked at the uh, GMSA. That GMSA is a mobile association. Uh, that's the telco sector. edX, Allison, Unitar, I Can Learn, ISOC Learn. We looked at them all, and we were looking at what they were doing in term and and uh, uh, what they didn't do. So what we did is is we, we said, okay, what are the challenges for an online platform for schools of internet governance? You gotta have, first of all, the technical expertise to create the tool. You have to have the, the technical expertise on the content. You have to invest in the platform, whether it's your money or an investor's money or charge fees, right? That's another way to do it. Uh, you have to go out and, and some of those tools we just saw we looked at each of those tools and we created um, uh, basically what is a SWOT analysis, what worked and what didn't. And, um, and basically if, if you have, like we have with, with North American school, taking that school experience and converting it to an uh, online learning experience. And what we did is the online learning experience is probably 90% more than what the face-to-face -face experience was. Because the face-to-face -face experience was mainly the speaker speaking on a topic, whether it's on security or, or some policy stuff on the internet or on the social media issues like Facebook. Um, so what we, we have is a massive amount of resources that we, we share and it's constantly changing and updating. But the online experience should be something that somebody could say, okay, I got real value out of this experience. So we started the VSIG and that was not just myself, um, Dr. Um, Alfredo Calderon, he's retired from the University of, of San Juan in Puerto Rico. Uh, so him and I made the mistake of talking about what are we gonna do about the North American school uh, because we can't do the Washington event in the fall of 2020. And I'm not sure if it was him or me and say, well, why don't we create something? And now fortunately with, with Alfredo, 
Alfredo actually designed a number of courses using a tool called a MOOC tool, which is a massive online open uh, courseware tool, and it's Australian called Moodle. Okay, so as I state here, the Virtual School of Internet Governance, VSIG, is a 10 module, massive open online courseware dedicated to the key, key pillars of internet governance. We are using Moodle, which provides a framework, including, as I said earlier, remember the, the infrastructure, the administration process, student registration, online forums, big blue button, that's the substitute for Zoom, as I mentioned, online live chats, quizzes, and instructional materials. So that's the overarching uh, course that we created. Uh, now it's rich content, Focus on the primary learning objectives as found in a face-to-face -face school of internet governance. But due to COVID-19, these schools are either halted or postponed, which is obvious, so I, we're doing this today. Our online courseware provides an integrated taxonomy from the novice to the advanced student to learn the basics of internet governance. It plays a significant role in providing a coherent baseline knowledge foundation to all students. So I wanna underline, like an underline baseline knowledge. It does not replace the face-to-face -face school. The face-to-face -face school uh, provides so much more, but so much less. So much more because we meet people like Sam. And, and it's since I met Sam, I've been um, a reviewer of articles uh, on his journal on cryptocurrency. Uh, you make friends, you make acquaintances, you expand your horizons. Uh, sometimes you could do it on, on virtual entirety, 100%. I have a friend in um, Goa, uh, maybe 20 years, him and I uh, have been, I've never met him, right? Uh, because one of the projects I'm involved with is recording history of the, 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 the it's called the partition of India in 1947. And so I record, I have, uh, it's with Cornell University and I do it in Canada of people who've come from India or Pakistan or Bangladesh and they tell their audio stories. So that's how I met him, but I've never, I've met him virtual and that's a rare, rare thing. So let me go over the milestones. We started the research, as I said, back in May, uh, right through to July, 2020, we started testing and we asked for feedback from a bunch of, uh, I would call them beta testers. So we had 13, beta testers we recruited, and some of them, Olga Cavalli and Satish, who actually run schools, we had them come in and evaluate uh, the approach we're taking, the content. The next stage um, is promotion and marketing. It's one thing creating a product, folks. It's another thing saying, here is the cohorts, here's the course, uh, you know, and we had no idea if anybody would be interested in taking this course. Um, you know, I don't think it was it was out there that that there would be a market for for this because they're going to say automatically, "Why should we take your course when I can learn is out there?" They do internet governance. Diplo does implement. Look at all those courses that I can learn. So, but. Um, we were confident that because we have a full academic roadmap from the um, history of the internet governance to uh, emerging technology, all those modules are in detail. And then we provide the entry point for anyone to go in and self pace to do the course and get out of the course what they actually need. So some people, uh felt that you know they they uh were only really interested in the legal stuff and and that's okay um we we are we are not forcing anyone to to attend every session we don't force everyone to read everything but what's key about it is the product was available so people can download all the content uh they can watch it when they want to every every session is recorded so those who can't make the session because of time zone differences, um, they can't. And the critical piece of this, folks, 
is that it's free. And that's going to be a central aspect of, of there's two tenants that we have, uh, folks, free and multilingual. And I'll talk about the multilingual in a second. So we started off committed. Right, right away, we said we're going to commit to 400 students and we're going to run the, the, the sessions like back to back. You can see September 6th to November 14th, 150 students. November 23rd to uh, January 29th uh, was the group B, you know, and, and then C, then D. And then what we had committed throughout the summer is to review, update the material, and actually offer a course at the University of Lutz in Poland. We met with the Polish government to do a course particularly for pre-IGF uh, in the fall. But the students didn't sign up. So thank you. Thank you. There's a God. I, I, I didn't have to uh, do that course in the summer. I was able to rest a little bit. But we had to go through everything, fix things, add things. So that, that it, and then bang, right away, we, we start again in September. Now, um, one of the things um, is we spent a lot of time looking at additional resources. And so our course is a real repository of complementary reading materials that if you wanted to learn more, you can. Um, so here's my first comment about our multilingual. So the first thing we noticed in our stat stats, only 7% of the students were coming in from Latin America, and that's 360 million people from Latin America. And whether Brazil or, or Portuguese or, or Spanish were not coming in to take the course, which made no sense. So we committed ourselves to launch in January uh, to August, uh, the tr full translation of the course, which is what we did. And we launched it on September 13th. So we're right into that same model Speakers every month, sorry, speaker every week on, on one of the topics. And that goes right through to um, December. And then we have a short break. Uh, they, hit, they have a pretty long Christian holiday through Latin America. So we probably will start in February, our next group in Spanish. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier on, we also modified and, and updated to do a new module, included emerging technologies. Um, and, um, again, uh, we started our, our English cohort on September 6th, which we're in the midst of right now. And we'll have a group F starting in, in the end of November, early December, which I, I, I provided in the link. So what is our vision? Our vision is to create and promote a comprehensive free and highlight multilingual online training program on internet governance. And, and the way that we first start with the vision, we have to come up with a strategy, which then we have to execute and succeed. So how, how did we do it? Well, we, we are reliant on corporate sponsorship to be able to pay for the translators to roll out the material. So we thank uh, our sponsors that came forward. And the first two platinum sponsors were PIR and RIPE. Uh, that's ripe NCC for they they run the they're the um, uh, RER for um, Europe and in your case you have APNEC in, in your region. Uh, gold sponsors came in uh, Verisign, Aaron, and Dot PR. PR is the Puerto Rican uh, domain name. Uh, Iking and and Affiliates, which is now Donuts, is Silver and GoDaddy, and and I want to recognize the faculty volunteers, and I should have there our advisory council. So our mission is to create a multilingual online training platform that allows novice and event students to learn the basics of internet governance, in addition to learning to network globally, exchange information, and improve their knowledge without any geographic or economic barrier. Free, and that's, that's critical. We are not discriminating against anyone and and we did notice a very significant number that were coming in from French Africa and and that's a concern for me 
because they are not speaking English. They're, it's it's got to be a struggle. So we are committed to do a French translation. Uh, I'm hoping that it will have that in the first quarter of 2022. Uh, and I'll talk about the other languages in a second that we're committed to. So uh, again, the student expectations were very simple. Uh, Sam, you're probably quite aware of this, agree to a code of conduct, in this case, a digital code of conduct. Uh, the complete, uh, this is assuming you want a certificate to complete all the modules. If you're a person that just wants to get in and poke around and, and don't care about the quizzes, don't care about the, the certificate, I don't know why you would join the cor course, to be honest with you. But like any course, it's free. I can't force them to, to commit 100% of their time and complete it. Uh, it's really up to them. Uh, but I could assure you, uh, I am going to, in the future, uh, probably reduce the number of students. We take more because we, we figure people will not show up. So that's why roughly I accept around 150. But, you know, it's going to be less and it's going to be more, you know, I'm getting a little tired of people. Uh, I'm uh, not going looking at the administration and they're not, they haven't even signed in. And I emailed them. I said, what's going on here? Why aren't you signing in? So I don't know if there's some of these people are invisible, but I'm, uh, I'm probably going to be a little bit more draconian in terms of going future, less students, but making sure they commit to the, the process. I don't know why we would take this course. It isn't easy and and it really isn't for everybody unless you're some crazy person that, that's locked in a, in, a, in a jail or something that you have to do something with yourself. But this is not for everybody. This is, this is dry, boring stuff. You know, uh, myself and others on this call like this stuff because we're boring people. Uh, but we try to make the material as interesting as possible by converting any report we find into eBooks, which you can download, look at it when you can. You can do this stuff offline. You can do view it on your phone. And there's many, many resources that are YouTube videos and you can click on for the subtitles in your own language. Okay, so very quick the geographical location where everybody's coming from. Very few from Latin America, very few from North America and, and Europe. North America is a special, special situation. Uh, certification on IT is not highly valued. Uh, I was a director with the Linux Professional Institute. It was like pulling teeth. 90% uh, of our certification came from Japan and from Germany. Uh, I did the largest exam lab in, in Cape Town. Um, no, that was in Pretoria years ago. But I can tell you from going to 42 countries, talking about certification, um, North America was the toughest. What well, was interesting when I was in Syria, almost all the class was female, which is completely opposite to North America. You would never see a female student in a Linux certification uh, accreditation uh, exam. So what does that tell you? Okay, so there's some very quick stats. Uh, again, just a quick, some screen captures of what, what the site looks like and, and how we got uh, what, what's involved. Uh, so you can see uh, there's a chat goes on. The entire session is recorded. Uh, this is our group A that, that got their certificate. You can see uh, lots of different people uh, from different parts of the room. The, I think Susan uh, is is from Fiji, if I recall. Um, okay, what's our feedback? Well, you know, they're going to say it's great, you know, and and um, you know, I guess they feel obligated. You know, I I'd like to see more critical comments. I'm sure some people are disappointed, you know, but they're being kind. They're not saying anything. I would like to hear their criticism. Uh, so going forward into past 20, 21, 22, what are we going to do? Okay, we want a higher number from different areas, but again, we're committed to Asia and, and Africa as our, our prime location. And again, this does not replace your face-to-face -face school in Asia. Uh, so group uh, in 2021, group B, C, D, 
we delivered, as I said in 21, 36 speakers, launched a Spanish track, and then right into three cohorts for English and two in Spanish and, and between 21 and 22. Um, we want to have third party accreditation. Uh, and that's why we have a signed MOU with UNESCO for uh, Russian translation. Uh, we partnerships with ITU, World Bank, Learning Academy, GSMA, the IGF Youth, NRIs, you name it, we're interested in, in working in partnerships. We're interested in seeing how other modules can be created. And again, we do this in partnerships with people who, for example, a friend of mine with ISOC a number of years ago did um, um, a course on the new uh, privacy laws of Europe at GDPR. And I said, okay, he created the course in Finnish. He did it in English as well. I said, let's deliver that course as a real course, not, not, you know, it needs to be converted. Uh, he has, you know, sometimes you can take a horse to water. You can't force it to drink. So, hey, yeah, he's all gung-ho, but I haven't, you know, I can't force anybody to, to do this stuff. So I, we thought the, but my view is the GDPR, it went three years ago, now there's the rules. I've seen new, new Kenyan uh, copy, um, privacy rules. I've seen stuff in California. I've seen in different countries. So the entire product, if it's a course on data protection and privacy rules, it has to be completely updated and it has to be truly international. Uh, moving forward, um, we want to solicit uh, endorsements, that's a minor thing, but advanced work on additional languages. Let me talk about that. That's the most important thing. Uh, so we want to do Chinese, Hindi, Bengala. Uh, those are the three languages that, that from Asia that we identified as important. We first thought about Arabic, but everyone that has come back has that that uh, work in and do the the uh, Middle Eastern School of Internet Governance uh, people at RIPE that that cover that territory. Most of the people who learn Internet Governance will learn it in English. That our market would be very very tiny. I'm still open to it, but um, I'm open to Indigenous languages, Swahili, for example, or or other languages that are ignored. Um, uh, talking to people at RIPE, they said Italian and, and German uh, are very important as well. Again, if if organizations step forward and say, hey, we have these languages, can you do it? We'll be happy to talk. But right now, Portuguese and English are being worked on. I have volunteers working on that. The, uh, the, uh, the French one's a little bit slow right now because Afrinec, that's the group that's similar to RIPE, Aaron, Backneck, and Apinec. Afrinex assets are, are frozen. You guys may have read that because of a trend. I don't know, secure, someone secured millions of IPv4 addresses. So their, their assets are totally frozen. So I can't pay my um, uh, translators. Let me just look at, there's a bunch of messages here. Uh, let's just see if there's anything to me. Okay. Uh, okay, moving forward. Uh, I, as I said, third party, uh, I think that's the same slide. Why is my slides going down? Maybe I'm not in this right page. Okay, sorry, I keep flicking into the other other screen and, and I end up um, not being in the screen. I keep clicking and it doesn't happen. So um, we got a bunch of stuff that, that one has to do all the time you have to sort of document your administration and who does what and what your roles are and all that stuff that that's an administration like any any organization so we got all that that stuff we're doing because we're looking down succession planning like i'm not going to be around forever neither is alfredo so we're being very realistic who will take this over uh in the years to come we already have uh, an assistant to Alfredo from Colombia. So that's working out quite well. Um, and, I, and I mentioned earlier what the other languages are. 
Okay, so I think I've covered it all. I took most of the hour just so I wanted to, to open it up to questions. So there we go. And there is how to reach me. And there's your information of how to see our stuff. So I'll stop sharing. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, quite an interesting talk. Um, I have many questions, but uh, I'll let uh, the audience go first. You know, I um, mean, in, in 2010, I did uh, the internet, internet governance course with the, the Diplo Foundation. And after that, I did a few other courses with them. And mm. that, that is what uh, made me interested. And after that, I joined ICANN, APNIC, and other organizations, regional organizations that look after the internet. So uh, let me start with a basic question. Why should we learn about internet governance? Uh, you know, I, I think um, it's it's so central to everyone's lives now, whether it's medical um, concerns or the, the political issues in terms of online voting or, um, you know, most people uh, who have internet access are using social media, uh, good and bad. Uh, so the more people can learn who is controlling it, who's pulling the strings, who's financing it, um, what are the voices that are out there shaping shaping the whether it's the new IP or or shaping the 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 um, uh, whether through IETF on terms of the the, the uh, any of the um, uh, RFCs, you know, it's 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 almost become you know we talk about digital literacy. It's it's the same thing as being able to read and write it. Uh, fundamentally knowing how it works, why it's important to you, and and it's and it's can't be underestimated. Now, our course is not for beginners, and 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 um, we we look at people who want to do this as a profession, whether they're a lawyer, or or in the bureaucracy, or a IT consultant, or a security person. So we we try to provide um, the entire landscape how it works and they, then they take out of it what they choose somebody who's a, 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 a very successful lawyer will probably find our section not all that challenging per se but looking at the section under history where how did we get here where, what are the challenges it's going to affect Sam? Yeah, Glenn, you are breaking up. Uh, I do not know whether it's my connection or your connection. But um, uh, anyway, uh, would you be able to share your last slide where you have your contacts? Uh, some of the participants uh, wants to uh, take down the information from there. Seems they are interested and they would like to probably make contact with you later on. Maybe Glenn just dropped out. Yeah, I can see uh, his internet connection maybe was not oh. stable. So we should wait for a few more minutes. Sure.
while we are waiting for Glenn, how about we introduce ourselves? We are a nice uh, small group, so um, um, my name is Sun Young. I'm also known as Yang Yang in AP organizations, and I'm the chair of a Asia Pacific Next Generation. And I, it is very nice to meet you all, and thank you for joining us today. And anyone from attendees, if you would like to introduce yourself, please go ahead. I would like to, I'd like to get to know you about you guys. Oh, Glenn, is he here? Yeah, I've, I've just been exchanging messages with Glenn. Uh, his connection is fine, but it seems uh, he cannot connect uh, to this uh, Zoom site. It keeps on buffering for him. Please continue with the introductions. Okay. Uh... Imlan, would you like to introduce yourself? You raised your hand. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, this is Imran Hussain uh, from Bangladesh. I am uh, Managing Director of EY Host Limited. Uh, I am ICANN Fellow and uh, currently uh, I'm uh, uh, working with uh, uh, Asia Pacific, uh, uh, sorry, uh, one minute. Uh, Epica, um, its short name is Epica, uh, working as a, uh, my team as a team leader. Thank you. Thank you. Glenn, you ready? Yeah, maybe it's still connecting for him. Next, next introduction. Khan, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay. Um, do you see me now? Oh, yes, we can hear you, Glenn, but we cannot see you. Okay. Um, that is fine. Uh, would you be able to share your slides, the last screen of your slide where yeah, you have I, the contact information? Sure, sure can. Okay. Uh, uh, glad to have you back, uh, Glenn. Internet, huh? Yeah, sorry about that. I don't, I don't know why that, that did that, but uh, yeah, well, you know, you're right. It's the internet. Uh, okay, can you see that? Okay, I'll yeah, try to uh, do full, full screen. Yes, uh, Charles Aria. Okay, you got that? Okay, so um, uh, moving on. Thank you, Glenn. Moving on. Now, for, for our audience, mostly young people that are uh, starting their career or uh, trying to move ahead uh, in whatever they are doing in their life, how yeah, is yeah. Uh, the knowledge of uh, what they gain from this internet governance course and uh, internet governance certification? What are the prospects to advance yeah. their career? Yeah, um, that's a good, you, you, you know, I think you, you, you said it the right term, the first step, because it's a journey, right? And, and you know, um, the, going and taking a course, whether it's ours or, or going to a face-to-face -face one or going to an ICANN meeting, uh, these are all nice things. But, you know, unless you have some purpose that how to apply the knowledge, or you have some desire to utilize it. Say you're interested in digital rights for uh, the disabled, uh, or maybe you're concerned about digital inclusion for for seniors. Maybe you're interested in, you know, online democracy. See, 
all of that see internet all of it you just have to decide what your passion is and 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 all we're talking about is having the internet tools to enable you uh, it, if you're a farmer you need a plow uh you may need a, a horse you may need a tractor it depends on the volume of your your how big your farm is but it's still a tool this is just a tool and people like myself and sam and others and going to a fellowship with ICANN or going to getting a fellowship to Diplo or uh, attending a, an ISOC meeting or being an ISOC chapter uh, member, uh, all of it is, it should all be part of your itinerary. If you're, if you're interested in internet governance and you're not involved with the ecosystem, and uh, then I don't know what you're doing because it's not for you. you maybe you should look at a different career. Um, may, you know, don't waste your time. Just, like, and I've seen lots of people, I, I've, I've seen lots of people showing up as fellows and there's been a thousand fellows with Ike. Did you know that, Sam? A thousand fellows with ICANN. Yeah, and, yeah, I know. And it is uh, so competitive. In, in fact, that is uh, one of the most, uh, I would say, prestigious fellowships that I have attended as an academic because uh, the way they treat the fellows and pay for everything, it's just like um, the best out there. It, it's a great experience for you. The, the problem is it's a challenge. Right now, um, people fight very hard to become a fellow with ICANN, but because of the six ICANN meetings, none of them were able to go. And I'm hoping that instead of the 30 fellows that they pick uh, normally, that they'll do 60 for the next two years and everything. So all those, you know, double it uh, and, and um, look at ways of, of getting more people involved. Uh, logistically, it's a nightmare for them, but that's too bad. The importance is meeting other people. And this is one of the things that they have. They also have next gen, which is people fairly young. They have to be in school under 25 that's a that's a whole other group but it's small it's only 10 or 11 people and and those are people doing some academic thing in school and they're uh they're not somebody who's mid-career or somebody who's a chapter head of isoc chapter it's it's a more it's a different group of people those are important as well but uh it's something something to consider but as you said, it's a it's a step in the right direction. You get involved, take a course, and especially in the case of our case, um, it's a free course. You have nothing to lose, right? And especially as we expand to Chinese, and we're talking to the Chinese um, uh, Internet Society, which has nothing to do with ISOC, by the way. Uh, some of you probably think it's a chapter of ISOC, but it's not. It's a government agency. Uh, they're they're looking at translating into simplified Chinese. Uh, the chapter of ISOC in in um, in Bangladesh uh, for Bang Bengali Bang Bangala, and I'm talking with Satish and Amrita on the the Hindi translation. In many cases, the people are really serious about internet governance, speak um, or write or can comprehend the English stuff but it's not fair to them i think people have the right to learn this material from people in their own country not me not me someone that speaks their language and that's an expert in their country uh that's that's the critical part um so yeah the finding people who are experts in your country is very important um that, that and that that's where the face-to-face -face school gives you uh, a lot more opportunity than than you would say. Uh, that's just strictly virtual. Uh, we we can answer your questions, but you know I can't have a drink with you. I can't joke with you. I can't spend quality time with you, and and that I could do with a, a face to face school. And and again, this is a very in our case you know, over a very short period of time. And then when the course finishes, you don't have access. It, like we have a limited number of licenses 
with the Moodle. And some people say, oh, I want to, I, I didn't get a chance to read that material. I want, you know, uh, I want to read it. Sorry. When the class, last class is done, the, every single name is removed and, and shock. Uh, well, what do you think? This is not a library. It's, it's, you know, use your head, uh, use the material. You're an adult, you know, we are not treating people like high school students. You're a mature adult. Use it what, what you can. If you choose, it's not for you. That's fine. I can respect that. Don't get in the way with somebody who's trying to improve themselves. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, any questions from uh, the participants or any of our members? I think, Kushal, you're okay, because I, I put that slide up. I wanted to show you the picture um, that I was talking. Can you see that picture that, that I no, have on screen? at the screen? moment, your screen is blank. Okay, let me let me look. I wanted to show you what, because I mentioned uh, earlier on. Yeah, the about ha Halloween, uh, Halloween, Halloween yeah. Halloween decorations. Yeah, I wanted to show. This is the front of my house right now. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay. Folks, can you see that? Oh, wow, Glenn, you are really into Halloween. Yeah, that's that's um, that's 17 feet high, those two skeletons in front of my garage. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm asking all the kids in the neighborhood to name the skeletons. So on the left, lights up. The one on the right has a light on it. But there's mm -hmm. other decorations. I'll send you a short video. But we'll probably have hundreds of people coming to our house on October 31st. It's the weather gets cool. It's not most pleasant. Hopefully it's not gonna rain, but mm -hmm. uh, that that is something we've been doing for a number of years. We change it up. So again, some people think that, you know, they get a little upset. They think it's too scary or, you know, it's whatever, you know, it, it's, it's, it's meant to be a lot of fun for people. Uh, thanks, thanks, Glenn. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it's good to uh, see your experience, the experience that you have shared of uh, how you started uh, the virtual school of uh, internet governance and how you have grown it into uh, thousands of uh, participants. And uh, that is something that uh, uh, we can learn from and uh, we can uh, emulate uh, going into the future. We are also next generation. We are Asia Pacific next generation. And we started last year with webinars and we are trying to get uh, more participants. We are trying to reach wider audience. Sure. So uh, what you have mentioned that uh, uh, giving them a certificate of uh, participation uh, is uh, quite important because there are merits because uh, especially for our audience in the Asia Pacific region, they want to have a paper to show people that uh, they have done something, they have attended something or they have gained some knowledge. So how, how does uh, giving them a certificate of participation affect uh, attendance uh, as compared to giving them nothing? Well, that, this is all part of the data analysis that we're, we're doing, reaching out to people uh, to find out what, you know, how did they use the knowledge in terms of their business, their careers? Um, you know, it, you know uh, we ask for testimonials. We ask for, for things that, that uh, demonstrate that there's a value there beyond just a piece of paper that they use the knowledge and, um, all I can say is your life's not going to get changed by taking our course. But if you're committed to a lifelong learning of attending the sessions at APC, attending, get going after a fellowship at ISOC, ICANN, uh, one of the RERs, um, committing to writing articles. If you have a passion about maybe revenge porn that women are victimized online, or you're interested in the whole issue of of DNS or DNSSEC or uh, DNS abuse, whatever, whatever your passion is, turn it into an opportunity. There's so many people out there that are more than willing to help you 
in your journey, but it's really up to you to start um, taking some, at some places, you know, you don't have the opportunity to take courses or meet people that can have a lot of influence on where you want to go because no one else is interested in your school or your village or your city. So sometimes online stuff is, is a way to give you the knowledge or connect you to make it happen. But um, my, my case, uh, just, you know, when I started this in 2009 with ICANN, I started with our, um, which is called an at-large structure. We joined Norello, which is the end user community with ICANN. I uh, became the secretariat. I became the chair. I was NOMCOM for four years. Uh, I've been volunteering with the next gen, with the fellows. Uh, I met people right across the board. There's 3,500, 4,000 people attend. I know hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, and I make an effort to meet these people. My wife used to be, I dragged my wife into it. Uh, she became the chair of NPOC, which is an awful profit. Uh, con uh, constituency so she was deeply involved but she's mostly involved with agricultural UN stuff now she's no longer involved with ITRA because that's she's uh, utilizing internet tools in fact she's actually hired a couple of people from Bangladesh as part of the doing programming for her so we're willing to give back we're not you know we're not unrealistic in terms of our expectations, but it takes a journey. Now, my case with, I joined ISOC and I noticed it wasn't a Canadian chapter. So I said, what the hell, I'll start it. You know, it took a while, but I did. It took about three years. And then I joined the ISOC board of trustees, made a difference in three years. Uh, ISOC had some challenges, as you may know, on a couple of years ago with this potential sale, um, but, you know, they've moved on from that. But I am I would say um, if I knew that the VSIG would be as much work as it is, it occupies a lot of my time, I, I would probably rethink it saying, hmm, you know, do I really want to commit to so much time? It, it, um, not sure. But, you know, I'm, I'm up to here, right? I'm up to, I don't know, my video is not on. I better turn it on. I'm, uh, oh, I can't open my video. So I'm, I'm pointing to the top of my head. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm deep, I'm deep into the weeds. But all I can say is if, if any of you get involved with it and it's not for you, it's not a crime to say it's not for me and, and just move, move, move on to something else, right? You, you don't have to, if it's not something you're passionate about, just move on to do something else. Oh, we but, can see you now, Glenn, and we can but, see the top of your head. You, yeah. Okay. Right up to here. I, I, I had this much, much work. Uh, sometimes I wear my hat. I, I got this, I got this hat here. Uh, actually, um, we used to do China because I did um, trade mission to, to China. In the, it looks and like we used to have that, these people uh, come. It is worn by the Pope. Yeah. Yeah. This was a Uber. Uh, I can't pronounce it probably right. The 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 group in 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 uh, in China? Western China, yeah, yeah. So this this is one of my hats. So sometimes you could see when I wear it too long, I get see I get a line across my head. <laughs> so that's that's how no I I was up to here with so much work with VC. <laughs> okay, Glenn. There's a question from one of the participants. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's like uh, you have uh, 10 modules in your course and yeah. the participant wants to know if they can only join some of the modules that they are interested in. Yeah, and, and honestly, we want to get it. Um, but for realistic, some people don't want to they're just interested in certain uh you know certain modules we are realistic we know people are busy we know they're adults they have children um it's not for them so yeah we we don't dictate that you have to read or commit to module you take it what you so we're very mature about and very responsible with it what i don't like is somebody who signs up for the course and they never show up because that's taken a spot for someone else 
and it's disrespectful. So I'm getting, I'm actually losing my patience with that. And me and uh, Alfredo had a lot of arguments on that. I, and, uh, I, I'm, um, so I'm, I've decided to, instead of 150 people, for, I mean, he agreed with me that we're going to limit it to 75 people uh, in our, in our next cohort, which is half the number of people are going to accept in. And, and we're going to send them emails and say, folks, if you're not in you're you know, you, uh, and again, you know, if somebody comes in and you only take a part of the, um, uh, course, that's fine. At least they've signed in. They've, they've saw, they've taken advantage of what they need. I have no problem. So let me tell you right now, where are we at in terms of registrations? Because that just opened up recently. Uh, I could tell you then how much spots. Okay, yeah, we have 39 already. So we're we're past halfway. So we we it usually happens the last month or so, everybody comes, but I have I put a limit on it of 75. So there's still um 35 spots that, that people can take advantage of if they're interested. So I'll um I think I gave you the link already for for that. I can put it yeah. back in the chat if you want. Thank you, Glenn. So uh, my final question is, I can see that you started this uh, virtual school of internet governance uh, last year because of uh, COVID-19. Yeah. And um, you have done quite well given uh, the number of participants and the number of uh, courses. So what 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 is your advice to us in terms of uh, promotion and marketing? What, what are your strategies? Okay, that's a good question. I didn't get into that. Um, what I did is because I run the um, Facebook site, uh, you guys may see it, it's called the iCity Hub. I do that with a, a few other people that I've met, um, uh, a lady from, from uh, uh, Armenia, uh, myself, there's, there's a few of us that are administrators for the site, but we have about 2,100 people that, that um, religiously um, uh, see the site. It's an information site. So if you go on Facebook, you could join it. It's a private group on internet related issues called iCity Hub. And it's, uh, let me just put that in the, so any info we, we um, okay, I, I just make put sure. that in the chat, Glenn. I mean, we would probably use it to, uh, if we, if we can uh, have your permission to use it to promote our webinars. Yeah, and I do that too. And then if you, if you've looked on it, you could see I promoted the session uh, a few weeks ago, but I also promoted it tonight. I knew there was issues. If you go through who else is posting, there also could be a, a, a good resource to do a referral. Now, there, like Mamadou, uh, he, I think he's paid by uh, um, Geneva Internet Platform. Of, of He's one of the reporters, I believe. Same as I'm Rita, one of the reporters for Diplo. So you get in his newsletter uh, that event. The digital rights people have a newsletter uh, monthly. That's important to get in there. Uh, so um, all the uh, other blogs that are out there that are dealing with internet issues, so whether the Skype chat with at large or Aaron or any of the RERs, all the ISOC chapter uh, members uh, to get out there. Uh, also the fellows with ICANN. So we targeted uh, on a number of, well, I saw I can, and, and you can see it in our, when we do the analysis, uh, how, how people self-identify. But as I said earlier on, our course is a good precursor to doing a face-to-face. -face. So you have people like, for example, the, the Nigerian school, there's 490 people that want to take our course. Uh, sorry, no, um, uh, not, you're missing the boat. You can't do a virtual course only with your neighbors and your friends. You need an international group of students to do it all 490. I don't care what country it's from. In this case, it's Nigeria. But you, you need a mix of different people because when you introduce yourself, you may find someone who's doing something on cyber law. Oh, I'm doing cyber law in Nigeria. Well, maybe I'm doing cyber law stuff in in Bangladesh or 
or South Africa. So you may, you get this organic relationship growing. And that's, that's an important part of a learning experience. Um, the other, let me give you another site, information site that I do. It's, uh, it's called internetgovernancehub.blog, but let me just put it into the chat for you. This is another site where anytime I find news about internet governance, um, I post it there. So those are the two sites that I regularly, the Facebook site, as well as my own blog, where I, I try to cite information. There is no shortage of getting students, that's, that's for sure. It, and I'm not spending any money on marketing uh, at all. But third party referrals, whether it's for DigiRights people or other organizations, it really helps. Thank you, Glenn. I mean, uh, I, I will contact you later through email or something to get more ideas about promoting and marketing our webinars. We have, we have a question in the chat. I, I think uh, Yang Yang asked a question. Digital yep. technologies, including network technologies, are developed very fast. The internet itself is not what it used to be based on TCP IP. That's correct. How has internet governance coped with this challenge? What efforts have you made to learning materials last long? Okay, good question. Uh, in fact, we reached out and we recently had um, a speaker on the new IP. Remember, Iowa actually came out with that new idea uh, because uh, it, it's, it's looking at, at how the new internet is going to be operational. And there was a position paper that HIWA did. Uh, there is a very good set of papers uh, done with the technology folks at, um, at ICANN. We organized a speaker and, and all, the, all this research, whether it's HIWA or Elaine's paper or uh, or the lecture, we integrated that into our section on infrastructure. So we have a whole, an entire section on new IP. So yeah, it, you have to you have to be aware of how things are changing, and uh, that's why it's a big job is reviewing each section. And if there's new trends, whether it's emerging technology or a new IP, it needs to get in there because otherwise, um, you know. Most of it is doesn't really change a, a lot because like the history and who's doing things. Uh, but when it comes to the technology, that's a different story. So you have to be aware of it. Okay, thank you, Glenn. Uh, okay. I think- uh, uh, Sir, if you yeah. allow me, I just want to ask a, sure, a sure. short question. Uh, so I, in my understanding, your uh, programs are Free of cost, right? Oh, sorry, I don't. Uh, you asked me. I did not. Uh, I'm having uh, an interference problem. So, what, okay. sorry, what are you asking me? The program you are running is, uh, I mean, uh, virtual school for internet governance. So, the yes. program is uh, free for the participants, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, the point you uh, mentioned that uh, some people do the registration, but finally they did not appear. So what do you think that, for example, if you take $100 for registration, and if the participants uh, completed the course successfully, you will pay it back. Otherwise, they have to uh, give some fine if they actually did not uh, uh, maintain the minimum participation ensure the minimum participation. What do you think about that kind of thing? Because we, while we are running a lot of uh, online activity, we found many people are just uh, doing registration because it doesn't make any cost for them. And they, they, they have the fear of missing it out. But when it comes on some commitment, they actually uh, don't appear. Even for, for example, today's, uh, registration, it was around less than 50, but only uh, 10 uh, people appeared, right? So there is always this kind of thing. So what do you think? Making some kind of penalty uh, will make it easier to handle online issues or, uh, from your experience? I just want to hear your feedback. 
Oh, wow. Uh, philosophically, I'm against charging anything, uh, but I do get, I do understand what you're saying. Uh, you can give them hundred dollars back if, if they don't complete the course and that commits them to a process. And, and there's an expression, uh, how much value do you give to something if you didn't pay for it? So if you, you if you didn't pay anything and it has no value, uh, so you treat it as a substandard product uh, because it's free. Um, that that's I could see the point. I I can see the logic, and I uh, I think I we are are going to take the 150 applications and scrutinize them and and you know communicate like hell with people saying you know you you are you committed to this and and do a lot of correspondence for them and see we're going to try different things to see what works but every time you do something it takes work um it it's not easy if it's um a deposit system you've got to process that then you've got to get it back to them um so that's extra work um yeah. but i i think you know i don't want to complain that that some people don't show up i think that's a reality look at tonight we have yeah. what we have 10 people with with the organizers this maybe people are zoomed up maybe people are tired of of doing online discussions maybe maybe they are they, you know they have other things better to do maybe they're just fed up doing stuff yeah. online I don't know. Um, like in some cases, people say to me, uh, I was talking to Olga Cavalli and she said they had 500 people. Like hard for me to believe that, right? I don't know if that's true, uh, but maybe it is, you know, but it maybe in they, they, maybe they were paying them to come. I don't know. Like it, it's, 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 uh, it's hard to believe. I didn't expect, and I know Sam and I talked about that, we didn't have a lot of people tonight enrolled, but those that are, and I said to Sam, I said, whoever comes, I will commit 100% of my time to doing this because I promise to do it. Uh, it's recorded, right? So maybe, you know, if any of you benefit from it, great. That's all that matters. And do I want to expect, do I expect something back? No, mm -hmm. because someone else out there in the universe will do something nice for me, right? But yeah. it's I'm doing this because it's I'm committed to the process and it's part of the marketing, right? Now, yeah. if if you guys all know people to take the course, great. But are we looking for students? Not really. That you know, we're not begging. We're not. We aren't desperate to get students into the course. It's not difficult. Like I said, I turned away 450 students because it doesn't fit the model, right? I'm not yeah. discriminating. I just mm -hmm. want it to be a whole experience right but um i take your point and and discuss that with uh, uh you know just because i'm saying i don't like the idea doesn't mean we're not going to discuss it with the advisory council i brought up actually at the advisory council i was complaining just like now saying i got all these people they didn't they never showed up i i'm sending out an email to them why where are you why aren't you here and Everybody says, well, that's life, you know, like maybe people are zoomed out. Maybe people are tired of doing online courses. I don't know, but we should, I, I, I'll take it under advisement. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Glenn. And um, well, I think uh, we have spoken at large and um, we have spoken for quite some time. Um, really appreciate your advice and um, listening to you about how you have done things and uh, how um, you have uh, started it up, uh, promote, promote, promoting marketing, um, making it count by certificate of participation and things like that. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. And I would also like to thank uh, the participants uh, uh, that are here that have again taken our time on a Saturday, Saturday morning to be with us. Uh, to see what we are doing and to learn from us. Yeah, and that's uh, great. we welcome you again and we hope to see you in uh, our next webinar that is going to happen on the third Saturday of December. Thank you okay, so much. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Satish sent that to me. So yeah, I'll join you guys for that. Uh, oh. I did the I did the session about two, three weeks ago 
with AP Sig. We did we did a group of us. So it went very well. It was at two o'clock in the morning. That was a tough one. Uh, so, so, but this one, I just stayed up late, so I'm I'm fine. It's twelve thirty in the morning now for me. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, see you, folks. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye.